Hey guys, my name is Derek Fresky and welcome back to my channel. As you can see from the title of today's video, I am gonna be editing on my iPad. So normally I do all my photography editing on my desktop with Photoshop and Lightroom, but today we're gonna to be editing on my iPad because I'm so excited that the new Photoshop app is out on iPad. They announced it like a little over a year ago and today it finally came out. So now that Lightroom and Photoshop are both on the iPad, I just wanna see if I could use my iPad as a supplement to my desktop editing. So Adobe has created other Photoshop related apps such as Photoshop Express and Photoshop Fix, but neither of those apps even came close to the power that the desktop version has. So I'm hoping with the new Photoshop app, we're pretty close, if not equal, to the power of the desktop version because that would be ideal. So I literally saw the app was released today in an article and I went straight to my iPad and downloaded the app but I haven't opened it yet because I wanted to give you guys my first hand impressions with it and see if we can edit a photo with it. So like I said, this is literally going to be my first time opening it and we'll see what we can do. I'm going to see if the interface is similar to the desktop version to see how easy I can jump right into it since I'm pretty familiar with the desktop version. So I'm excited to see it. So I have this folder here on my iPad and I imported this one photo, but I have it on here twice. One of these is raw and the other is JPEG. So if it can handle raw, amazing. But if it can't, I have JPEG in here as backup. The other two photos are over here because we're gonna play with overlays and like really get that full Photoshop experience. We're gonna open Photoshop for the first time. This is the home tab. This is when you first enter Photoshop on the iPad. You can take a tour of the app. You can import your photos. It's like you can suggest features to them if it's like missing a feature you wanna see. Here on the left, it actually has cloud documents. You can save your files on here and then they'll be accessible on your computer as well. And then what do we have here in the corner? It just says I'm online. And then this little wrench, you can have dark or light mode. I love a dark mode, so I'm gonna stick with dark mode. I think that's basically it for the opening screen. So let's just go down here to open. And I wanna go to camera roll since it's on my iPad already. Here's our folder with our photos that we're gonna be editing. And I'm just gonna click on the raw photo first because I'm very curious to see if Photoshop on here can handle raw photos. I know that Lightroom CC on the iPad can handle it, but I just wanna see if Photoshop can. I'm pretty sure it will since Lightroom can, but let's just see. Oh, see, did you see that in the corner? It said it is not supported. So it looks like we only can do JPEG on here. Okay, so since it won't let me open the raw photo, let's just start with the JPEG. Okay, so we have our unedited JPEG right here. And I'm just gonna go look around and see what the app has to offer. It does look pretty similar to the desktop app, obviously a little more like simplified, but it does look pretty similar. Okay, so over here we have our select tool. This looks to be like the transform tool. We can make it smaller or bigger. And then over here is our lasso tool. Oh, it looks like you can hold down and get more features just like the desktop version. We have the brush tool, a bunch of different brushes. We have the eraser tool, a bunch of different erasers paint bucket tool and the gradient tool. Then over here we have our handy dandy magic eraser and clone stamp. I'm very curious to see how that works on here. So after the magic eraser, we have the crop tool, obviously crop, nothing new. And then we have the text tool to add text. And then this is the button where it looks like we add more images. And then this is the eyedropper tool to pick a color, just like the normal version. So this button over here seems to be our layers. This is our layers as like you would see it in Photoshop. This is our blending mode. So that's the add the layer button. And then this one looks to be like the hide the layer. Okay, so that seems to be our mask button. And then this one looks to be like our layer properties button. So this button right here seems to be the filters and adjustments button. And it looks like they only have Gaussian blur and invert, but it looks like they put their like most popular two in there. I mean, when I'm in there, I mostly only go in there for Gaussian blur. Then our last one is just other layer action. So we can lock a layer delete a layer, rename, add clipped adjustment, begin multi-select mode, duplicate layer, copy layer, select all, load a selection, flatten layer, merge down to merge visible. So since I don't want this layer right here, I am just gonna delete it right now. Oh, and that down here, it looks like there are more buttons. There's like an effects button and a smart filters button, but they say they're not supported on this device yet. So I'm assuming that it's just on the way. So the next thing we're gonna do is see if we can edit the photos similar to what we can do in Lightroom. 
I know on the desktop version of Photoshop, you can make adjustments similar to what you can do in Lightroom. So I'm gonna see if we can play around with the colors, the brightness and all that. And when I was playing around with the iPad a little bit on my own, I noticed if you hold down the add layer button, you have the option to do an adjustment layer. And here we have brightness, contrast, black and white, color balance, exposure, hue, saturation, levels, and vibrance. And these are the similar buttons to what are on the desktop version of Photoshop. I think it's missing a few, but these are the basic ones. I think the only one that I'm sad that's not on here is the selective color button because I honestly use that a lot in Photoshop. So I'm gonna see what I can do without it to see if I can still get a similar effect. So let's start off with brightness and contrast. So with the brightness and contrast, we're just gonna play with the sliders until we get to a point that we're happy with. And obviously this is just like first run edits. So we're just gonna go in and do minor adjustments and then fix it once everything's on there. So we're not gonna use the black and white button because I'm gonna be doing this in color, but I'm gonna click on it just to show you guys what it's like. And the black and white button is similar to the desktop version where you can adjust everything. So that's pretty cool, but I'm gonna keep this photo in color, so I'm gonna delete this layer. So let's go back to adjustment layer and do color balance. And again, we're just gonna play with this until we get to a point we're happy with. That looks pretty good. And then go back to adjustment layer and we're gonna play with exposure. Honestly, we can't really play with exposure because it messes up the red on his face. So with the hue saturation button, this is honestly probably where I'm gonna do a lot of the color editing, if it allows me to. It doesn't look like so already because it looks like it's for the whole photo, whereas on the desktop version, you can highlight different individual colors and edit those, but I'm not seeing an option for that. So we're just gonna drag the sliders a bit. And then another adjustment layer, we're gonna go to levels, play around with this. Pretty similar. Another adjustment layer, we're gonna go to Vibrance. So from the looks of it, the Photoshop app is missing a lot of photo editing tools that the desktop version has. So at the moment, we'll still have to use Lightroom and Photoshop to edit only on the iPad. So far, it's pretty good. I think once they add like the selective color button and let you go in the hue saturation and adjust the individual colors, it'd be a lot better. But as of right now, we can't do a lot of color manipulation. We only can do like basic editing. So normally, since the features for the photo editing are pretty limited on the app, I would go into Lightroom first and then edit it in Photoshop. But for the sake of the video, I'm gonna see what I can do in Photoshop so that everything's edited in here to see what we can do at the time being. So what I think I'm gonna do next is add the star layer that I talked about earlier. So we're gonna go over here on the left to the add image button and we're gonna go to camera roll. And then I have two options. I have the normal stars and then I have the shooting stars. So I'm gonna start off with the normal stars and we're just gonna play around with this, see how it works. I'm gonna put it in the corner to make it fill the frame. In order to see the layer below, I'm just gonna go down to blend mode and I'm gonna click on lighten. Okay, so now we see both layers. And then the next thing we wanna do is go in with the eraser tool. Looks like this top button here is how we adjust the size of the brush. It looks like this is the hardness. So since we're trying to fade the stars out to make it look more realistic, we're gonna have this on a very soft brush. It looks like this is the opacity of the brush. So I'm just gonna have it like somewhere in the middle. And then these last three dots looks to be eraser settings. So we can change like the roundness, the angle, the flow. The smoothing, this is very helpful. This is all in the desktop version. But what I like about this on the iPad is that you can use pressure for size and use pressure for opacity. All right, so we're just gonna go in, get rid of the stars from this layer, make it fade into the sky. Then we're just gonna bring our brush down so that we can go in and take some off of his face. And it looks like if we just pinch, we can zoom in. So I'm just gonna go in here and make sure I get all the stars off of him. So what I wanna do is fade these bottom stars into the sky so that it's more realistic. I'm gonna increase my brush all the way again to 1000 and I'm gonna bring down the opacity a bit so I can just like lightly brush over so that they're still there at the bottom but they're way lighter. So that is our final photo. We were able to do all this in the Photoshop app without using any other apps, without going on my computer. Everything was done on the iPad in the new Photoshop app. So what I think the app does really well is working with layers and that's obviously a big part of Photoshop. So they nailed that spot on. 
but I think it's still missing a lot of photo editing features that the desktop version has. So as of right now, if you want to edit on your iPad, I think that you will have to use the Lightroom app along with the Photoshop app, but you can't do everything in Photoshop just yet. So once all these features are added, I think Photoshop on the iPad is going to be a great supplement, if not a replacement for the desktop app. When we were editing, I didn't experience any bugs. Everything worked so smoothly. So I'm super excited to see where the app goes in the future. All right guys, that's all I have for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And one last thing before you go, make sure you follow me on Instagram. It is at defresky. I'm gonna have it linked down below. But other than that, I will see you guys next time. Bye.